boards are struggling with board succession issues. Talking to the CEOs and boards that I've talked to over the last six months, they're struggling to build strong boards. And they want a strong board because a high performance board is a strategic advantage. Strong boards can reach out to the community and bring business back to the bank. Strong boards can reassure regulators that the governance standards of the bank are very high. But building a strong board requires an active board succession plan. And that's difficult. At our recent Acquire Be Acquired conference, we polled our audience, and 36% said that they knew that they needed skills that were not currently represented on their board, and that they would have to have one or more directors to fill those needs. This is the basic reason why succession planning works, is because it can build your board to have the strengths and skills it needs, and strong boards make strong banks. Boards are identifying the talent that they need in many different ways. Some are linking the strategic planning process to the people that they'll need to carry out the plan. This includes identifying lower level officers, upper level management, and board talent that they'll need. Another method is the board evaluation. It's a self-assessment about what the board members that are currently serving think that they will need in the future, and if that includes new board members to fill in those slots. A third way is consultants. Outside assessment often brings the expertise of many bank relationships. These consultants can say, given where you are in your growth plan, these are the kinds of things that we see on successful boards. Each is a different approach to get to a high performance board. Boards are looking for a variety of talents. And of course, it depends on the condition of the bank, the geography of the bank, and the growth plan for the bank. At Acquire Be Acquired, in our survey, 13% were looking for a merger and acquisition expert someone who'd had that experience before. That makes a ton of sense in a conference that we're talking about mergers and acquisition. 25% were looking for a risk management expertise, and that makes sense as well. The regulators are asking for risk management at a board level. 50% were hoping for a business development director, someone who could come and bring with them a certain amount of business to the bank. Helping grow with the bank is one of the most common things we hear CEOs, chairmen, and directors asking from their new directors. Some bank boards do a very, very good job of training their own talent. And training benefits the entire board. Training can help you bring up better comp committee members, better audit committee members, and also even train the board to do better business development efforts. But you cannot get specific skill sets that come from life experience from training. That has to be sought from outside the board. Boards are finding the talent they need in a variety of ways. Usually the CEO and board have identified the talents and skills that they're looking for the next particular director. They go to regional networking, banking and business events, and in those events they try to identify the people that would be most likely to be good fits for their culture and good fits for the skill set that they're looking for. Some boards have found that, that a good source of retired financial service professionals by looking at their own law firms, their accounting firms, and other firms that they work with, and looking at who is rolling off of those professional organizations that might be useful for the board. There's also a group of community directors that go to local professional recruiters. These recruiters have experience about the kinds of skill sets that they're looking for and go out and seek an individual director that they might not be able to have a natural discourse with through a professional association. There's a whole variety of ways, but it's getting tougher to find anyone who's willing to serve on a board right now because of the workload that's involved and of course in a community bank level there's still some liability that some really meaningful professionals try to stay away from. Transitioning board members off your bank board is very, very difficult. It's the hardest thing, I think, that a CEO, a chairman, or a lead director faces. In our Acquire Be Acquired survey, we found out that 62% of the respondents thought that they had one director that needed to transition off in the next three years, and 39% said they had more than one director that needed to transition off their board. It's a very, very difficult conversation to have with someone who's become a friend and an associate to say that their time of board service may be ending. One way of handling this is mandatory retirement ages. This is commonly used in a lot of community banks because it takes the sting out of having to have that conversation. Unfortunately, it penalizes the 75-year-old director that is very, very good and does nothing to help you with a 55-year-old director who's not doing as well as you'd like them to do. The most disciplined and probably the best performing boards take the process of saying I'm going to ID the goals that we have for this board, I'm going to measure our board against them, I'm going to recruit new directors that fill the needs that we need, and I'm going to transition board members off that can no longer provide high value to the bank. A very hard thing to do, but very worthwhile doing. At Bank Director, we think board succession issues are of vital importance. If you have a story that you'd like to share of a best practice of how to get a director onto a board or a director off of a board, contact me.